Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we will talk about HTTP status codes. In a client-server relationship, whenever the client calls the server, the server gets back to the client with something called a status code in its response. The status code can be uh, from a number of many different ones such as 200, 400, or 500. So we're going to take a look at each of these different ones and in which case do we get which one back. The first group we're going to take a look at are the successful responses. So we're going to start with 200 which is just a blank response that says that whatever your request was was successful. It does not give a ton of detail. It just tells you that uh, whatever your response, uh, whatever your request was, it was a success. The next one is the 201 created response. So this is a very common response for any post HTTP request. This pretty much tells the client that whatever uh, payload that the client sent to the server was created, and uh, the client can move on with whatever it wants to do next. The next one is 202 accepted. Uh, this is a very unique status code. I haven't seen a lot of places where we have a use case for this. But usually what the 202 response means is whatever the client submitted to the server, that thing has not been processed yet. Some asynchronous process has been kicked off to take care of that later on. So the 202 status code just tells the client that the request was a success and whatever processing the client wanted to be done had been kicked off and it's gonna be taken care of asynchronously. Next one is 206 partial content. So this is a pretty common status code when a client requests any large amount of data such as audio or video data. In this case, uh, the response that comes back from the server is broken down into different parts and the status code tells the client that the response is not in one big chunk but uh, in multiple segments that the client has to read. The next group of status codes I'll talk about are the redirect responses. These are in the series of all the 300 status code that we can get from the server. The first one we'll look at is 301 moved permanently. So we get the 301 status code when whatever URL that the client requested has been moved to a new location. So let's say you're uh, trying to query google.com but permanently google.com has moved to a different domain. In that case, the server is going to return to you that new location. Uh, the client is going to see that it's a 301 uh, and it's going to find the new location in the response and automatically make a call, HTTP call to the new location. So this is good because uh, by giving the new location, the client does not have to do an extra work. It's going to automatically uh, call the new location and get the resource that the client wants. Also, if the browser gets a 301 response, it notes that it knows that the move to the new domain is permanent, so it automatically stores that information, so that the next time you are trying to make an HTTP call to the old URL, instead of waiting for this redirection, the browser is automatically going to take you to the new URL. And this also helps uh, for different caching and SEO purposes. The browser knows from a 301 response that this redirect is permanent. So it updates all of its SEO data and all of its cache, uh, caching data so that it does not have to redirect all over again. The next one is very similar, which is the 302 found or moved temporarily. This is a uh, similar to 301 in that it means like it means that a redirection is required so whatever the client is requesting is in a new location so the client is redirected to that new location however unlike 301 this is done on a temporary basis so the browser knows that uh, whatever this new URL that the browser is redirecting to 
is just on a temporary basis. So it does not update its SEO data or any caching so that the next time the client wants to go to the same location, it's going to try to hit the server again and see if anything changed on the redirection front. The last redirection related uh, response is the 304 non-modified. So this just tells the client that uh, whatever the client is requesting is already cached in the browser. So instead of hitting the server, it's just returning the response from the cache. So usually the 304 not, mo not modified responses are very, very quick as you don't have to hit the server and it achieves any kind of caching purpose for the same request over and over again. The next group of status codes I'll look at is the 400. So 400 is usually anything related to your request being bad. The first one is 400 bad request, which is the most common one. You usually get this when the server cannot process the request from the client, uh, but it cannot process the request because something was wrong on the way the request was formatted by the client. So it can be either of invalid syntax or wrong parameters that the client is sending to the server. So usually if you get a 400 bad request, you should look at the way you're making the request uh, to make sure you're making it correctly. The next one is the most common, which is the 404 not, not found. This is the most common response that you get whenever you go to the wrong URL. This just tells you that whatever URL you typed or whatever URL you're requesting is uh, not there. So it's not being able to be found. The next one is the 413 payload too large. Usually you get the 413 if your response is too large. So let's say you're requesting uh, all the blogs that a user has created. And for some reason, the user created tons and tons of blogs and the response that the server will give you back is too large. Uh, in this case, uh, instead of returning to you the payload, it's going to return to you a 413. That's because there is an upper bound for any HTTP request and how much data can be transmitted in a single request. Also, there can be some kind of limit set on the server's end. So let's say as an endpoint in a server, I can say that never transmit more than two megabyte worth of information. In that case, if the server finds out that whatever you requested is more than two megabyte, it's going to return to you a 413 instead of the payload itself. The next two status codes are related to authentication issues. Uh, the two are very similar, but there is a slight difference that we're going to talk about. The first one is 401 unauthorized. So this means that your request lacks valid authentication credentials. It can be either you put the wrong password or the wrong username or email. Uh, or maybe you're using the wrong kind of authentication method. Usually the response gives you uh, an idea of what's going wrong. So it might tell you to retype your email or password, but the response will have enough information to let you know how to authenticate again. The next one is 403 forbidden. Uh, this is slightly different from 401 in the sense that 403 forbidden means that access is permanently forbidden. So for a given user, it's not because uh, that the username or the password is wrong. It's because that even if the username or password is correct, the user just does not have access to that resource. Usually uh, on any application, there are different levels of rights given for different resources. So if you're getting a 403, that means your user does not have the necessary privilege to access that. Uh, resource. The next one we're going to look at is 429 too many requests. This is the only status code you're going to get if you're being rate limited. So as a client, you can uh, call the server as many times as possible. Some servers uh, take precaution in terms of uh, limiting the number of requests a given client can make to the server. So let's say being a client, you're only allowed up to 10 requests per second or 50 requests per minute. If you are sending uh, more than that, then the server is going to just send you a 429 back telling you that you have you have reached your rate limit and you can't request uh, 
you can't send the same HTTP call over and over again. Servers do that to stop being DDoSed, otherwise it's very easy for a bunch of clients to spam the server with the same request, uh, which won't let the server catch up with requests and it's going to cost the server to go down. So usually in the response from a 429, you get some information related to when you should try it the next time around. So let's say if you're given an upper bound of 60 requests per minute, it's going to tell you to try uh, next minute. Or if you have a request every second, it's going to tell you when you should try the next time to make sure you don't get rate limited. The next group of status codes we're going to take a look at are the 500s. So 500 means there is some uh, issues with the server and the server cannot process it. So the issue does not lie with the way you're requesting. It has to do with the way the server's code is structured. So there might be some bug or the server might be down. So the first one is just a 500 internal server error. So this is a catch-all status code that servers use to let users know that something went wrong. Uh, usually it's because of any kind of bug in the server code itself. The server does not know what to do and it just returns the 500 back to you. Servers will try their best to give a more descriptive status code rather than just a blank 500. That brings us to the next one, which is the 503 server is unavailable. Server is going to respond back with a 503 if it's just unable to serve your request. For instance, there might be too many requests coming to the server at the same time and the server cannot take in a new request. So it's just going to tell give you a 503 back. Or let's say the server is down for some maintenance reason. In that case, it's going to give you a 503 back so that you know that uh, there is no bug in the server itself. It's just down temporarily. So 503 is more like, hey, the server is down temporarily, so try again later. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much all uh, I have for you all today. Uh, those are pretty much the common status codes that you, you're going to be running into on a day-to-day -day basis. There are a bunch of other status codes that uh, are there to be used, but uh, in more common cases, these are pretty much all you uh, would need to know. Thank you for listening so far. I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.